frugal crafter it's time for our weekly sat chat let me peek and make sure we're rolling we are wonderful um how has your week been week here has been pretty good um last week as you remember i launched my new watercolor glass class that has really it's been my most popular class ever so i was just like really excited and thrilled and it's so awesome to see students work they are doing so good in this class um i know people see glass as like being super uh, complicated and it's so awesome to see people getting the results that they want. So, um, so that has been really exciting. I've spent a lot of time in the classroom answering students' questions and critiquing work and um, and whatnot. So uh, that's what I've been doing a lot of this week. Um, it's nice to have a little bit of a breather after you release a, cl a class. Oh, by the way, um, there is a launch special on that class. I'll put a coupon code for 50% off that in the video description. If you're not watching this on YouTube, um, if you go to my school, Lindsay Wyrick dot teachable.com and use the coupon code shine you can get 50% off on the brand new watercolor glass class so if you're you can find it and get the deal even if you're not watching this on YouTube because sometimes you know you're watching it on Facebook or whatever uh, some other place maybe it was suggested to you on your TV or something and that way you can get there as well because uh, I forget people watch us on the TV and they don't necessarily have the video video description um, so it was really nice to see um, people enjoying the class and it was nice to kind of have a breather after um working on the class for so long to create it so it's just been a it's been a good week um i reset the studio meaning i cleaned up because as um the last uh last last wow it's been really busy actually um because before vacation i was doing a lot of work to um you know get a bunch of projects done before i left on vacation and then when i came back i was working on filming the class plus you know you always have a few of the little projects that are kind of um sneaking in and then last week i had all the projects that i kind of had put on the back burner while i was filming the class so i had to do those and i just ended up with a bunch of supplies in here that needed to be put away i had random things in this the chest of drawers here behind me um just because i needed to get off my table so I could work on something else and uh, so I reset everything that took a good part of yesterday I was also I had I started it because um, I was filming a paint pouring video which will be up next week we're actually gonna you know how you do if you've ever tried paint pouring um, you might be practicing on canvas panels or whatever and then you have all these panels and you're like what the heck am I gonna do with all these um, these practice panels so I have a bookmaking tutorial very easy very not even I don't know if you can't even call it book binding it's so easy but um, but I have a tutorial on, you know, like getting cells, a, a very predictable way to get cells. And um, then what to do with all those panels you have when you're done all your acrylic paint pouring. <laughs> because um, you, you could end up with quite a bit. Um, so it was kind of a fun little project. So I had to clean up in the other studio, which I've been, I used to call that Studio A and this Studio B. I've been calling it the sweatshop lately because my daughter has had my sewing machine out. Mm, probably have lipstick on my teeth. Um, my daughter saw my sewing machine out in fact, I haven't even looked in the mirror. I think I'm okay. Um, I did before I came down here, but then I did some painting. It's been a while since I, you know, did my makeup. So hopefully everything is still hunky dory. Um, so she had been doing a bunch of sewing. She had bought a bunch of clothes at yard sales and, um, and she's been like upcycling them and revamping them and whatnot. And uh, so she'd taken over that studio. So I needed to do a paint pouring thing. I didn't want to do it in here because it tends to be messy. I wanted to do it in the messy area. So I had to, that started that cleaning up and reorganizing that area. And then I'm like, well, while I'm at it, I really ought to reorganize this and get stuff out of here. And it was a whole thing. But I love doing that sort of thing. I find it very recharging and very calming and... Um, and, uh, and yeah, in fact, one of the things that Lila had bought to upcycle, she ended up just like, yeah, there's nothing I can do with this. And um, I'm like, well, she's like, do you want these? I'm just gonna throw them away. So of course, yes, I want them. I want clothes that are just gonna be thrown away because I do art and I get covered with paint and I don't want anything that's like too precious. And so um, these shorts I'm wearing, actually, they're, they're, they're a little big, but they're very comfortable, but I'm pretty sure they're pajamas. Um, I did walk the dog in them this morning <laughs> because they're so comfortable and they're so cool because they're like a rayon material but yeah I'm pretty I'm pretty sure they're pajamas um so hey I'm all ready for bed except for washing my makeup off my once a week makeup off <laughs> I'm pretty much ready for bed uh, but that's all right it's okay to be comfy you know just as long as you put your jeans on one time a week and make sure they still fit the, oh the gym is open again um actually the gym opened up in June I think but they were very um the hours were very limited and it was very, um, a lot of restrictions and stuff. I'm like, I don't want to, I don't even want to go there yet. Um, but 
this month they actually started classes back up again and I was so excited to learn that and I'm like as soon as I get done um, with my glass class I want to get back to the gym I really have missed it and so last night I went to um, one of their water aerobics classes and I loved it I called up first thing in the morning to read because you have to reserve a spot they can only have 30 people in the entire gym it's the uh, the Bangor YMCA, YMCA it's got two pools it's a huge place well I think it's pretty big I mean I don't know I, I don't know gyms in other cities or anything but it's a pretty big place they allow 30 people maximum and uh, so I was afraid that, you know, I might not be able to get into a, a class the same day. So I called up and, and they had room and they had several spots in the class I wanted to take. And I reserved my spot and then I, you know, asked the girls if anybody or asked my whole family if anybody wanted to go with me because we have a family membership. And Lila did. So uh, we got a spot for her in the class as well. And she's learning to drive. So I left really early. <laughs> like... Uh, it's probably like 10, 15 minutes away, but I left like, we left like half an hour early to make sure there was, if there was traffic or parking issues, uh, that there would be no stress because uh, Lila was driving and I wanted her to have just a very calm, I didn't want to be like, oh, we got to get there because we're going to be late. I just wanted to be very calm. So we got there and we were like, it was like 20 minutes before class started. So we waited in the car for a bit and then we went in and, uh, and the lady there, she took our temperature and, you know, they do the whole COVID screening and whatnot. I feel very safe going in there. Um... And then they said, okay, next time could you just come right before the class, please? Because we don't want loitering in the hallway. So it's like next time we'll, we'll, uh, we'll arrive a little closer to class. But, um, but it was great. I really missed being in the pool. Even though it's summer and I can swim outside in ponds and whatnot, I don't, I'm not going to get in the water and be active for uh, an hour. That's just not me. I'm going to get in the water. I'm going to find some flotation device and I'm going to bask in the sun because I'm lazy if I'm left to my own devices. I need an instructor telling me to, you know, flutter kick and do the thing and use the dumbbells and all that stuff. I'm not going to do it on my own. So yay, the gym is open and I can go to water classes again. So I'm very excited. And the Zuma class, I'm actually surprised because they had the Zuma class going. I kind of had to decide, do I want to go to Zumba? Do I want to go in the pool? I really want to go in the pool. Um, but I think next week I'm going to do one or two water classes and one Zumba. I didn't think they'd have the indoor classes open yet, but they must have to limit it to like four to six people, I would imagine. Um, you know, because, but then again, you know, when you're doing Zumba, you can't, you know, you've got a pretty big wingspan. You know, you can't be right next to somebody anyway. So I'm looking forward to that too, because I enjoy the classes. That's the whole reason that, um, that, that we've kept up our membership, the whole, like the whole quarantine, because A, we want to make sure the Y sticks around. And also, you know, it's, you know, I, I'm somebody who feels like they have to get their money's worth. So knowing that there's been months where I haven't used this service at all, it's like, I gotta make up for it. I gotta make up for that lost time. And, uh, and it's just, it's good for you. It's good for me because I tend to like fester and worry about stuff and having like 45 minutes or an hour where the only thing I can focus on is what the instructor is telling me to do. I need that really. Um, I keep toying with, oh, I should just get rid of the membership and walking the dog. Like an hour a day, you know, I probably don't need to go to the gym, but you know, I actually, I do because walking the dog is not really strength training. And you know, once you get to a certain age, you really need to strength train or you could, you know, get osteoporosis and having light eyes and light skin, you're more prone to having osteoporosis. So, oh, and uh, lighter hair, you might notice I did my roots this week. Um, I think I went a little too light. It's okay. My hair's getting too long. That's why I didn't, didn't fix it. I just tied a bandana up because I just didn't want to bother with it. I, I figure you guys understand, you know, we all have, we all have COVID hair, so we're good, right? Plus bandanas are cute, right? I, I was feeling like Rosie the Rivier, Riveter today with my, with my tent, my t-shirt and my pajama pants out. I don't know why that makes me think of Rosie the Riveter, but mainly the, the hair tie. <laughs> I love, I love bandanas. Um, oh, something else for anxiety, I actually got this little, this little, uh, I used to always plan all my YouTube videos and stuff in one of these student planners because they have a full calendar and then they have um, a two page spread that's just the week and you've got room to write to-do lists and stuff, but I realized I could write more to-do things on a, on a day than I could actually get done. So I stopped doing that and started using my Google calendar. But, um, but I decided to use this and write down days where I feel cranky and days where I feel anxious and days where I feel sad and stuff like that and see if there's any sort of pattern. Um, you know, you just kind of get <laughs> and plus I'm taking my supplements. So, you know, doing pretty good taking my vitamin B and, uh, and my St. John's wort. And what else was it? Oh, just calcium because the whole osteoporosis thing, I don't want to get that. So hopefully, um, with all the vitamin D that I'm getting from the sun, uh, you know, yeah. Yay, health. I don't think I've really been off the rails that much health-wise during quarantine, but, um, you know, it's definitely... 
definitely good. That's another thing, going to the Y, I see people, act, like people that I'm not related to. It's nice to get out and see other people, I think, and be in the community. It's a good feeling to be in the community. And I think we kind of lack that community vibe right now where a lot of us are still home. Um, or if we're working in an office, we're, you know, there's only like one person in an area. And that's tough. That's tough for like a social butterfly or somebody that, you know, really likes to uh, talk with, with people. Although, you know, I gotta say, it is nice when I have the house all to myself and I can like, you know, binge watch Nurse Jackie and eat popcorn and like, just like, it's quiet and nobody needs anything. That's really nice too. I, I binge watch Nurse Jackie, oh my gosh. I started watching that uh, on vacation and that show is so addictive. It's an addictive show about someone with an addiction and it's so good, but I would not watch it if you've, uh, I don't know. I don't know, I've never struggled with an addiction. Um, and I've never been close to somebody that's had an addiction that I know of. Um, so I think that that might be difficult to watch, but it is kind of, it is kind of a, it's a very engaging show. It's very well written. <clears throat> it's on Netflix. Um, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, I couldn't wait. I was like, next episode. I'd watch three episodes in a row, and that's so unlike me. I was just like glued to that show. I'd watch it at night, usually when I'm just chillaxing, um, because I'll be chillaxing downstairs um, in the in the living room because I love the heat, and <laughs> the addition has a heat pump in it, so it's like a, the air conditioning in the summer. A heat pump makes heat in the winter and air conditioning in the summer. It's too cold. I don't want to be in 70 degree weather when it's summer. I want to like be soaking in like the 80s and 90s as much as I can because I just love the heat. <clears throat> and 75 degree air conditioning or 72 degree air conditioning feels cold like it's like a it's like I don't know like somebody throwing you ice water in your face whereas like you're outside and it's the sunshine it's 72 that feels great you know where you're it's winter and your house is 72 that feels fine probably because you have sweaters on or whatever but like air conditioner 72 just feels kind of like uh, just I don't know like somebody's throwing in a glass of ice water on you or something I want I like the heat I love summer uh, but I'm gonna embrace every every hot every season I've told myself that right now in the summer when things are rosy I'm gonna embrace fall I'm gonna embrace winter I'm gonna embrace mud season I'm gonna find the joy in every day <clears throat> ask me how I'm doing in January <laughs> you might get a different tale but but for right now I'm feeling very positive uh, I'm generally feeling pretty positive. So, um, oh, something really, so last week, remember I told you about, do you guys want to see the other room, by the way? Remind me at the end of the video, I'll take it, oh, I'll, I'll take you over there, you can see the sewing, oh, and I didn't tell you I said this, did I? I don't know, I'm just like rambling. Anyway, so my daughter was doing the, um, her sweatshop in there, and so I had to tidy up so I could paint for her, and while I was at it, I made a little sewing nook that would be more ergonomic, because she was like leaning against a bar stool, sewing at my high table, when it was, it's a hollow core door, so she's bouncing around, sewing machine's bouncing around, how can you sew like that? So I made her a little nook, so it's, the machine won't bounce, so there's a little place to iron, a little place to do a rotary cutting, and uh, from one spot, sitting ergonomically with a chair with a bag. Um, and I can use it too, obviously, because it's my sewing machine in my space, but um, I don't sew that much. Although, when I was at camp on vacation, they had a cute little quilt, and it was made out of like strips, and I'm like, I have a jelly roll, which is like a little roll of stripped up fabric. Um, like, I have a jelly roll. I could probably do a couple squares with it and make a little lap quilt or a little wall hanging for like sound echo <clears throat> or something. Oh my gosh, I'm froggy because I haven't really talked today. So you're getting the brunt of me not talking all day. You're getting, <laughs> you're getting the full brunt of my chattiness. Um, Usually, like, if I ever run into a neighbor when I'm walking the dog, <laughs> she gets the brunt of my chattiness, but it's all good. It's good to see people. Um, so, yeah, if you want, at the end of the video, I'll, we can scoot over there and I'll show you that. I mean, I know I recently just showed you that as a, and it feels like more of a storage area over there to me now. This feels like my home, my filming space feels very comfortable and, and good. Now when I go over there, it just feels like a storage closet, which is so weird, because that was always my, that was my space, that was my essence. But now I'm feeling much more, much more. Mm, like this is this is good. This is right. I brought in some stamping supplies. Um, I don't know if you can see this rubber can. I, I spray painted this cart. People always complain about these carts on um, on the stamping like groups on Facebook. But I got this a few years ago. It was before KonMari when I needed the extra storage. I got it from Joanne.com and it was rainbow colors. Um, and then I gave it to Lila because she needed some space after I KonMari. I didn't need the, need the space. So she spray painted it like she used whatever spray paint we had. She was using gold, silver, and gray. And so um, I asked Jason to grab me a large can of spray paint in silver. And so I just sprayed it silver. And I'll probably just leave it like that. I thought about sponging on some colors to make it look kind of distressed, but... That's distressed enough, that's fine. It's really great for like the mini ink pads, your blenders, actually your bigger, I have pretty much all my ink in there. 
Um, so I can roll that into the other room if I don't want to keep it in here, but it just tucks right away and I like having those ink pads in here. So for those of you that told me, Lindsay, you're not going to like running back there every time you need an ink pad or you were right. Okay. So sue me. You were right. But I'm not bringing everything in here. Just those ink pads. I draw the line. I'm not bringing everything in here because I don't like clutter, but I did bring that in there because I was like, I was doing a card last week, uh, earlier this week, and I was back and forth like a crazy person. I got some good exercise though, which is good because I hadn't been to the gym yet. So um, that all works around, all ties back, right? Like a bad comedian, <laughs> a good comedian would make you laugh. I'm just kind of like, you know, just chatting. Oh, so last week I talked about those Sennelier pastels that were super bougie and expensive and I couldn't wait to use them. And oh my gosh, were they fantastic. I used them last weekend in Sketchbook Sunday, also on Critique Club, and we did this painting right here, and they were so buttery and nice to paint with. I loved the experience. They felt so good to, like, so smooth and nice, and I could use Prismacolors over them. They were just fantastic, and then I thought, okay, I'm going to try my Pentels. This was after I did the video, so it's not in the video, but I did that. I grabbed my cheapo, like, six dollars for I don't know, 50 Pentels. Okay, these are like, you know, 50 for, you know, 24. These are like $6 for 50 pastels, and I did this parrot face. And you know what? To be honest, you could get, I think you can get just a good look with those cheapo Pentels. They're just not as fun, and they don't feel as good to use. So it's kind of like, you know, yeah, you can run in cheap sneakers, and you can get a mile down the road, no problem, but it's not going to feel as good as running in really high-quality sneakers, I guess, to get a gym analogy in there. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I really like them. I'm going to use them some more. That parrot, the first parrot, is in Critique Club. Um, if you are a member and you want to check it out, um, I'll show you what I'm working on for next Critique Club. It's this right here. I was actually going to do this for Watercolor Wednesday, but it turned out to be um, a lot of drawing. I'm like, oh, people aren't going to like a lot of drawing. And then it turned out to be a lot of working through issues, and people don't, well, I mean, I guess some people like seeing the working through issues, but it's more the critique club folks that love seeing that kind of nitty gritty. How are you going to get yourself out of this, Lindsay? And I'm going to do more to it. I think I might even bring in the oil pastels on this one because um, I want, I feel like it needs more body to it. But um, this is a teacup that I painted. Because when I was getting into all my still life stuff for my glass class, I found this teacup and it was my mother-in-law's and uh, it says it's a July themed teacup. It's got July in there and I'm a July birthday too. Um, so I thought that would be fun. I made a cup of tea with this, these funny little tea bags that are like diamond shape. Um, so yeah, this has been sitting out on my table all day. I can't believe, all, all week. I can't believe I haven't spilled this. It's been up since Wednesday. Um, at first I thought I was going to drink the tea, just nuke it, but yeah, no, I'm not going to be drinking that tea. It's been sitting around here. It's probably going to get moldy. I don't know. It will get moldy. You know, that's a funny thing, like tea and coffee, even if you don't have anything in it, it will get moldy if you like a coffee pot out. It's it's happened to me when I had my studio downtown in the summer, I'd leave a coffee pot and forget to clean it sometimes and it would be nasty when I come back. Oh, so gross. So gross. Um, but anyway, that's what I'm working on for our next critique club. Um, oh, I'll show you what I'm working on for Sketchbook Sunday, if you're going to watch that tomorrow. I Actually, I film my sat chats usually Friday nights, um, because I figure if I'm going to do my makeup and look nice, there may be a slim chance that I go up to dinner or something. Maybe Jason and I will go for a date or something, and I'll be all ready to go, because I'll have makeup on. Of course, I have to wear a mask now, and I'll have lipstick all smeared on the inside of that, but, you know, hey... Well, yeah, at least my eyeballs will look good <laughs> because I got mascara on. Mascara is a once a week endeavor for me. It annoys me. Um, it makes my eyelashes hit my glasses, which I don't wear during the sat chats. Um, so this, I use gouache, and I was kind of inspired by uh, my friend Marty Owens has been doing a lot of gouache landscapes. They look fantastic. And uh, James Gurney, who's one of my favorite contemporary artists, very inspired by their work lately. And um, so I did this gas station. Can, I don't know if that's focusing or not. I'm just going to tuck my head behind there. Maybe you can see. Um, so that'll be su uh, Sunday for Sketchbook Sunday. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed this quite a bit. Oh, uh, finished up my binge watch of Nurse Jackie while I was painting that. Oh, that'll be a time-lapse voiceover. Um, and I really, really liked it. And this wash is funny. I'm going to show you this wash set. So um, the Artsy Company, who's uh, kind of new on the scene, they sent this to me. They have a new a new gouache box design. I had, I always mention that it's kind of, it's kind of too bad with gouache because if you tip it, um, it can make a mess. If you don't have palette walls, if they're not up high, if they don't go to the lid, um, the, the gouache could dry and crack and then fall out and get mixed up with your other gouache or just make a mess. And so what they did with this, they have a thing that latches and then, oh gosh, I hope I don't 
Oh my, there we go. Um, they have a foam. There's a foam pad on here so it seals your paint so they shouldn't dry out. Just gotta remember I put it on the same way so I don't contaminate my colors because it will get on the foam. I mean, that's gonna happen. I can pick that up with a wet brush and use it next time. They are the jelly cup kind, but they're a different shape than the other jelly cup ones that I have. It's the same amount of paint. Quality seems to be the same. I wouldn't go and get these if you have the other ones, but I do like the carry handle and I do like the fact that the, um, that the foam will come down and knead it. I don't, I guess you could probably use the foam for a palette, but what I did was I just, see, it, it's actually, you know, pretty good handle on there. I like that. Um, but I just used my ceramic palette because I was home. If I was out painting with that out and about, I would just use the foam, I think, or I'd bring a little piece of palette paper and just stick it on the foam and, and go with that. But um, I just used my glass palette because I'm here. Uh, it grew wet fine. I sprayed it and it, you know, was able to re-wet and yeah. Yeah, it was good. I'm not going to do a review on this because I feel like I've reviewed so much inexpensive gouache lately that um, people are getting sick of it. So I'll tell you now, I give it a thumbs up, but you know, I'm not, I'll just, I'll just talk about it on the um, Sketchbook Sunday. So if you have questions on that, you can ask either in this video comments or on Sundays and um, yeah, that'll work. I thought about recording the video over in Yarn Central today. Um, but uh, for some reason I didn't, I don't know. Oh, probably because I was wearing these kind of funny shorts and I was like, yeah, if I'm sitting in that chair over there, you're probably gonna see my funny shorts that might be pajamas, might not. I don't know. I thought that might be kind of weird, but I did show you the weird pajama pants, so. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, so I reset, I brought this in here. Uh, I've got still some empty drawers in there. I've got lots of empty drawers over in the, in the storage area, but I will show you that because, um, uh, because you might like to see the sewing nook. Maybe that'll give you some ideas. So we're going to take a little, we're going to take a little journey. Let's take a journey. I'm going to turn that over there. We're just going to walk and we're walking. I feel like Mr. Rogers. <laughs> it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day in the neighbor. Would you be mine? We're going to go through the <laughs> small gap <laughs> into the old space. I don't leave the lights on all the time. I turned them on because I figured I was going to. I'm um, gonna come over here. So this is where I used to do my sat chats. Remember that? I used to have the markers on the uh, the in front of me there. That's where the mar marker stands used to be actually. Let's, oh, let's reminisce, shall we? Let's reminisce the days old day. We'll reminisce. <laughs> oh, the lighting's different though because I, uh, I changed it. Actually, you know what? I'll be able to do videos here, I think, sewing videos. So I put the cutting mat here. Um, got my little plasticky thing, plastic ruler. I didn't leave the rotary cutters out. Lila knows where to get them. I put those away. Um, but I figured I'd probably stand up to cut here. This piece of table was actually, um, my, my son, when he moved upstairs, cause the studio where I filmed, that's, that was his bedroom. He brought his main desk, but didn't bring the L part. And so it was just sitting around and we were turning another, we were just kind of cleaning up the basement and making sure there was room for all the weight equipment and stuff um, to exercise during COVID. And um, there, this piece of table, I thought, well, why don't I, uh, cause I moved there, I had this like weird table here. It was more of an outdoor finished uh, coffee table. So I put that up in the balcony and this, I thought, you know, this would be great for a little, let's just do this here, for a little cutting space. And then I put the ironing board right over there next to the sewing machine. I had it switched because honestly, I, I don't know, I think like I would more turn to my right to iron something, but, um, but I think that'll do. It's not like you're ironing as much as you're cutting. I don't know. Maybe I'll switch it around. Oh, I can't see what I'm, what I'm looking at here. Um, I might switch it around, but for now, that's going to work. It's going to be so much better than it than being on the big table because the big table bounced. And um, and this way, you know, you can reach a pedal, you can sit, you can have your back against the back of the chair. It's just a folding chair, a cushion folding chair. It's a good height. It's a good height for sewing. Um, that's too tall for sewing, but I'd stand, I would stand up to cut, cut something anyway, personally. And then you do have the big table for... Um, for doing your cutting. If you want to lay out a pattern and cut it, you got plenty of room there. And everything else is pretty much the same. I mean, I did put that uh, that drying rack up there. That's actually an old poster board rack from Rite Aid. And so I've got some like uh, some paint pours drying. I've got just a few random things up there. It's more of like a, just a holding bay for stuff that needs to dry that I don't want to keep elsewhere. My photo area. Um, die cut area. I still come in here to do my die cutting and to grab my stamps. All my everything is still stored in here except for like two watercolor sets, 
which I have in my drawers, and just the basic I use everyday stuff, like my brushes are stored here. There's Lila's uh, clothes to be altered in that basket, and you know, my stamps are still here. It's pretty much the same. One thing I changed though, I don't think I showed you this before, I don't think I had it ready, but up there up high, where's my finger, there we go, up there up high, and on that CD rack, I just put all the, um, the markers that I am either using for freelance project or have been sent to review that I might need for like comparisons in the future. Um, because I do like if somebody says, what's the difference between the Artix marker and the um, Ohuhu marker or the Artix marker and the Arteza marker or something like that, I can go grab a couple of theirs and make sure I'm not forgetting anything and, you know, then give a, uh, you know, I could tell somebody, well, the Artix marker is a finer fine tip or, you know, the Ohuhu marker is smaller, like a Copic easier to hold. Um, and it just makes it, it makes it really convenient. Plus, I'm kind of a marker junkie. <laughs> so, yes. But it's a better uh, a better addiction than what Nurse Jackie was addicted to, right? Oh, man, that show was so good. Such a good show. Oh, I'm sad it's done. I'm sad at how it ended. She made bad choices. She kept making bad choices. I was very frustrated. The first couple seasons were so much fun. It's like, oh, look at her go. She's having a ball. And then it's like, oh... You gotta change your ways, Nurse Jackie. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be good. It's not gonna go well. It didn't go well. I mean, you're leaving a path of destruction. But it's a great show, so there you have it. I started The Sweet Magnolias on Netflix, but I had to bail out. It was a little too sweet for me. Maybe I'll get back to it. I don't know. It just was a little, a little, little too sweet. Although it was Southern, I am reading another Fanny Flag book. Thank you for recommending that. I didn't realize she had so many. Um, it's on my phone though, so uh, I can only read on my phone for so long before I get really fatigued. I gotta check out the library because I've got some overdue books I need to go back and see if they have any of the Fanny Flag books. Because I think that that could replace my Irma Bombeck for feel good books when I need to have kind of like a laugh. Because I love, I remember when my kids were babies, um, reading At Wit's End by Irma Bombeck. Totally. I was like, I almost peed myself. It was so funny. So I, I, I think every new mother, they should leave the hospital with a package of newborn diapers and, um, and, and Irma, that would send by Irma Bombeck because it's so funny, you know? Yeah, so good. It's so good. <laughs> but, um, that's pretty much it for today. I don't think anything else over here has changed that much. Um, it's clean now. My box of wire, I, I closed my box of wire and tucked it into the big table because I'm like, I still don't know what I'm going to do with that box of copper wire. That was one of our quandaries the last time we were over here, but, um, I don't know. I'm just too lazy to like sit there and strip all the rubber off of it and then coil it up or I don't know how to store it. I feel like anything I do to it, it's going to weaken. I should just leave it as it is until I'm going to use it. But who the heck knows when I'm going to use it? I've got like so many projects that I want to do that are in line before mystery project with wire. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but that's all I have for this week. I hope you're having a great week. I hope you're making the best of summer. I hope you're able to get out and enjoy some of this weather. I hope you're not too cooped up. Um, this is hard on people. And a uh, big hug, a big virtual hug for all, all, uh, all my crafty friends. Um, and we'll see you with some more tutorials. Uh, yeah, I'll be playing with those magic mushroom blenders. Hopefully saying magic mushroom does not get my video demonetized. <laughs> Talking about Nurse Jackie and magic mushrooms, yeah, this video is going to be... All the views that hate ads, that's probably going to take care of that. Oh boy. Oh, being a YouTuber is challenging. Well, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. And as always, happy crafting. Bye.